Hello everyone and welcome to the Saturday Geeks Sherlock Review with me John Parker and me Jack and in the end of the day of course is real reviewing the Abominable Bride. Now there's a lot to cover with this because obviously Sherlock is kind of uh, a show that you, you have to kind of deduce yourself in a way especially the way Moffat kind of writes this modern Sherlock. You, you do have to kind of deduce yourself how it's uh, how it's playing, which is actually very good compared to, because obviously it's a Sherlock story and it's about solving mysteries, so really getting the audience to also try and get involved and solve it uh, is very good, and I quite like that, the, the way Moffat can kind of um, bring the audience into the show and then make them feel like they're actually the ones solving the murder mystery. Now, this plot for this one, it's... Um, when the, the actual show began, I was kind of confused as to why it was being shown in the playback. Because from what I have read previously, uh, prior to watching it, was that this is going to be set in the Victorian era, and that it was just going to be a random story. Which it it's, technically was. It technically <laughs> was, but it was a random story being used, so that modern Sherlock can kind of have an idea as to how Moriarty would have come back. By using an unsolved murder mystery to then try and get an idea as to how he might have played dead so to speak but anyway we got shown a little previous clip um, from 2010 up to 2014 of the events that happened in the modern Sherlock show and then of course obviously the last time we saw Sherlock before today was uh, him being on a plane after committing that murder God, it feels like a long time ago, doesn't it? Yeah, it's so it like feels... I'm trying to go blank about a lot of it. But there's a reason why for that. Watch. There's a reason why for that, and that's just going to tie into the new series, which I'll explain later. Um, so after we'd seen that clip, we then immediately went to the Victorian era, and of course got thrown into a case that Sherlock and Dr. Watson were actually uh, already on. Now, I'm so definitely not going to go through the entire Victorian era, because that was just unbelievably kind of confusing and it would definitely take too long to go into. But basically, after Sherlock found out on the plane that Moriarty was back, he kind of put himself into a state where he explored his own mind. What from what we've been told in the previous series was that Sherlock has his kind of mind palace where he can kind of that's where he solves everything. That's where he sees all the the random spots of information that not anyone else can see. And for the first time ever, we actually saw him go into his mind and actually see how he thinks. It's basically how he thinks, how he solves his mysteries. And, and we also used. we oh, also yeah. got a um, an idea as to how he can make and go into those deep mind um, yes. palaces with the help of something that uh, yeah no one should be approval of. <laughs> Not really. No, it's uh, so by using high well as he puts it, reasonably high doses of whatever, cocaine or morphine, whatever you want to call it. It's cocaine this time, <laughs> but it can be morphine, apparently. <laughs> um, that is how he kind of puts himself in that kind of trance-like state. And he used an unsolved mystery that was quite, quite close related to how Moriarty was supposedly coming back to help him get an idea as to how Moriarty might affect his death. But of course... It may not be as it seems, so Moriarty might still be dead. But it would be as if someone, as if someone else has taken easy. his place. Yeah. So by using the image of Moriarty, it will get Sherlock's attention, possibly make him feel intimidated, frightened, and then obviously we'll get to this one point where we see this person, who the hell is this person, what, what are they doing, and it turns out that they're the new Moriarty. So it seems that Moriarty is not exactly... It, does, it doesn't seem like the way Moffat brings Moriarty in. It doesn't make him seem human, if you, if you get what I mean. Mm. He too, he too is like a ghost. Which is kind of nice, uh, kind of a, a good fitting for this episode in particular. Because it was a story about a woman who presumably turned into a ghost, who then came back from the dead. So Moriarty is more or less presumed as a, or, no, or portrayed, should I say, as a ghost rather than an actual human. So, the transition in between the Victorian era and the modern day 
was quite fascinating, and I didn't that I did not expect that at all. Actually, none of this I expected. No. Well, actually, um, funny to say that when you said to me prior that this episode was going to be completely random, and then of course I go downstairs and I watch the episode and I look at the flashbacks, I was thinking, well, what's that's that? completely yeah. contradicted what Jack said, and I was what's, like, what's going on? I was like, what's, what's the point um, with this? It's, it's yeah, mm, it was but, me. but then it made me think it's most likely a, con a, a, a continuation or some sort of. Uh, there's a, there's a meaning as to why Moffat would have made this episode, and then of course when I saw him go back in time into the um, into that Victorian age, I realised that this story was probably going to be random. Yeah. But there'd be a link at the end, and there was. Um, the transitioning was a little bit strange. Even the referencing to the modern day that was people like, whoa, that's a bit weird, you know. Um, but all in all, that was it was a really good plot twist. I think Moffat generally does do very well with these Sherlock stories, compared to Doctor yeah. so to speak. I mm. have to, I have to say, Sherlock, uh, Sherlock, Moffat is much better with Sherlock than he is with Doctor Who. Just putting it out there. Um, but yeah, Sorry. you know the you know the, the the beginning did kind of feel a little bit kind of dull, a bit kind of slow paced, and a bit kind of hang on. Yeah. What, what, what's, I, in fact, what I had to do, I here? was having to rewind. Did you on on a TV box? Because um, I couldn't understand what he was saying, they were, what they were saying, yeah, and it, it felt, felt as if I wasn't grasping what they were trying to get at. Yeah, I, it quite I annoyed felt me that. actually because I thought that I was just something I wasn't just concentrating or something. No, but no, no. I, I felt that I, f I completely felt that. But then when we got to the manor, and that kind of darkish bluish setting came in, and then we saw the bride just there, then that kind of set things in a good motion. And I was really intrigued, and then from that point on, it was all great. Um, there was times when, when we brought the when when he when the modern day came back, I was like, wait. As soon as the modern day came back, I was like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, can we continue, please, with the with the Victorian era? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, but after seeing the modern day once or twice, I then kind of thought, right, okay, this Victorian era isn't really happening. It's all in his head. And that's when the realization came, and then of course, towards the end, we all find out Mycroft looked weird in the Victorian era. When, yeah, that in, was just... in the, uh, the the bodysuit. <laughs> and by the way, can I just say that little uh, wager with his life? How many more cakes can he stuff in his face before he uh, finally kills over? That, that was quite that funny. Yeah, was quite funny. That, that was, was really a good funny. little bit of comedic um, comedic insertion there. I have to Even admit, like Cumberbatch. And uh, does a great job of Sherlock with his little kind of um, humorous. Yes. And, and. No, 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 you're coming. You I was going to say, Moriarty's actor. I like him, yes. Great actor. Brilliant uh, to do The last thing he did was um, Spectre. He mm. played the, the new guy who um, was replacing uh, MI5, um, you know, the, the, the double O agency. He's a very good actor, he is. He's very good. But also the guy who plays um, Mycroft. Mark Gattis. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you do know he's a popular, he's a very common writer for Doctor Who. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is surprising because I was like, oh. No, no Mark yeah. Gattis is a, um, a very great fella. He's really great with, with the stuff that he does. But I think coming back to now, Sherlock, both modern and Victorian. Mm. So, um, yeah. So, all in all, that's the kind of brief summary of the plot. And I do say. Or dare I say, brief. Um, There's so long to go into. You might as well just watch everything again if you don't understand it. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> it is one where you do have to kind of go back slightly, probably rewatch and then get an idea as to what's going on. Write it down, study the plot before yeah. you get confused for next episode. Um, but from what I've seen, this is obviously going to transition into the new series now, Series 4, which unfortunately we're not going to get until 2017 by the looks of it. You are joking. They're filming in the spring. But you know why? You know why? Um, why? Martin Short and Benedict Cumberbatch are quite popular Hollywood stars as well. Martin Short? Martin... Is, it, is that his name? Martin Short? Martin Freeman? Oh my god. Who's Martin Short now? I do apologise. Is it Martin Freeman? I think, I think it is. Do a quick Google search for you. I do apologise if it is. Ah. 
can I, what can I say? It's eleven o'clock at night, and I had I spent all this evil. It is Martin Freeman, but it's Martin Short. I don't know. That's a completely <laughs> different person. <laughs> a Canadian American actor, apparently. Either way, <laughs> on Saturday Night Live. Oh. Benedict Cumberbatch and Martin Freeman have both been doing A-list films. I mean, Martin Freeman's just finished the Hobbit series. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And uh, Benedict Cumberbatch has done actually quite a few things. Uh, the Imitation Game was one, I think, one of his recent ones that he did. So oh. they're not always stuck to doing TV shows at the moment. They're they're doing proper big films, and I think Sue Johnson actually said that those two aren't exactly, you know, in their thumbs. They are actually out um, doing big films. So that's that's why Sherlock has been delayed quite a lot, and of course Moffat's got Doctor Who to write and manage. So you can see why it takes so long to do in the end, but overall, worth the wait. So, um, congratulations to Stephen Moffat, I do have to say, you know, he is brilliant when it comes to Sherlock instead of Doctor Who, it, it is really good. Um, his continuity, also fantastic. Uh, it's great to see that, obviously, the costumes they wore from C the end of Series 3 were still there and still present. Brilliant. Really well done. Um, so, I think for the, for the first time for a different show, we're now going to give our verdicts for it. Uh, there's one more, a couple more things we have to mention. Oh. In his mind palace, we did notice that there was quite a lot of things that we could see. And if you imagine, if if uh, if he's had cocaine and it's gone into this crazy stupor while he was working out the case or wondering as to how he gone, could possibly come back, we also did see a lot about Sherlock himself. And we also saw that he was imagining, if you want to say that it was the cocaine, he was imagining um, Dr. Watson interrogating him in multiple times throughout the um, imagination about him, how he was. For example, information on his relationships and information on how he does, what he does and how, what he can spot. And sometimes him not always being the cleverest one. He was also talking about how... Mycroft was more cleverer than him. And it was like he was coming to a realisation a lot about, you know, he isn't the top of the tree and he has got other things wrong with him, the cocaine, the morphine usage, the relationship issues, his brother. And it was just interesting to be able to see all those little secrets he was thinking about throughout the um, imagination trip of a lifetime, I'm sure, with an overdose of that percentage. 7% he said, but I think apparently it was more at the end we heard. I never saw any of that. Well, I got I, I get what you mean. But the relationship I'm... part was when he was waiting outside for the woman in the dark. I remember he was saying about impulses and whatnot. Um, the deduction part was when he was looking at the morgue. Um, what was the other thing I mentioned? Forgotten. Regardless, you get what I'm saying, guys. Yeah, I do. I do. So, I do get um, what you're saying it's um, quite interesting. So I never actually kind of. Well, I did pick up on it slightly, it's but it's not something I dwelled on. So it was just it was just him investigating. I think into himself while he was imagining, it's, which is weird because it means that there's a lot more to show that we don't know. Was that they're trying to perceive? So he was basically doing two cases at once. He was also trying to solve himself and solve this mysterious case at the same time to kind well, of help. Technically. That case of solving himself is always going on. If you watch series yeah. one to three, you could tell he was constantly being interrogated and constantly being questioned, and he always constantly pushed it back down again because he doesn't want to talk about experience, which is perfectly acceptable. Some people don't. And uh, But I'm sure we're going to slowly get more and more info on Sherlock. So it's not something to worry about. I just thought I'd make that observation out. I could be completely pulling the wrong strings here. But I just picked that. No, I just picked no, it. No, no, no. It's uh, a good point. Good point. Well made. Um, anything you want to add to that? Um, at the moment, no. Apart from the women at the end, we did see some more modern life uh, links there. The actors that were playing were the same people you saw in the modern life version. Yeah, that was true. And that it was, was almost weird as hell. when he was interrogating all those people in pointy hats, the, the women. Yeah. Um, they were linked to the modern type thing, and he was obviously investigating something there. But it was just interesting how he was bringing it all in. It's sort of, yeah, verdicts? Verdicts, rather? True, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, out of ten, what would you give it? Uh, 
It was overly complicated, but I did like it. Um, for a one-off, I would say that's a really high 9.5 for me. But then again, hmm, I wanted to say I wanted to give it a 10, but it, it just, it was overly complicated. That was the problem. It's just, I'm not quite entirely sure what happened in certain parts of it, but I, over, I understand the overhaul. Well, if it helps, I'll be giving it a 9. Yeah. I'm sticking with a 9. I'd, I'll just say for... Oh, yeah, I'll say hello to, to, hello to medium 9.5. Only because I did like the extra little... The, it, was, it was something different to what the series was originally showing, so I like that. I'll stick to a 9 because, like I said, it was kind of overly complicated and there was bits in there that, well, it was a bit too random for my liking and it, you, you couldn't really conti catch on with the story without going back and actually diving more into them, which was unnecessary. But still, all in all, it was a fabulous story by Stephen Moffat and uh, I believe one of the best things he has ever written. So, uh, congratulations there. Mm -hmm. So, guys, that is our and Sherlock. Of course, did he co wrote write it as well? I do believe he did. What was it called? Abominable Bride? Yeah. Abominable Bride, there we go. It was written by. If it will let me see it. There we go. Written by Mark Gattis and Stephen Moffat. What about for them? So, they did a great job with that. So folks, that is our Sherlock review. I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, we do intend to review the series when it comes around, of course. If ever. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and to the next video from us. One thing I do want to add, being as it's the new year, we're technically the second day in because you're watching this oh, yes. on the second day. Happy New Year, guys. Well, we've already said that on the previous one, but still, oh. yeah. what I do want to say is thank you very much for all your support all the subscribers, to everyone who has either watched, subscribed, or not even subscribed, but just simply watched one of our videos. Thank you so much for watching. And thank, you for, thank you for sticking around. And Oh, yes, guys. Thank you so much. We have now hit 300 subscribers, as far as we're aware. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It does fluctuate, so thank you very much for that. Yeah. Um, so just thank you. I know, we're there's, slowly on the rise. There's, there's, not, there's, nice. there's not much else you can add to that, but... Yeah, it's I just... Suppose, I just Thank you. <laughs> it is good to acknowledge the folks who just not only subscribe, but just watch one of our videos and then come yeah. back out a few weeks later and watch another one. I mean, cause and people don't normally like to subscribe or make a ch don't make a channel to just so you can click the subscribe button, but people do like to save our channel in the favourites list, and that I do appreciate. And what also, think of that? we also appreciate your likes and your dislikes, because it does yes. indicate what yes. you like and what you dislike about yes. what we do, and therefore we're able to filter and change how yeah. our content is shown depending on your feedback. So your comments, your likes, your dislikes, your subscriptions, it all adds up and thank you very much for it all. Even that one view count is vital to everything yeah. and it makes us, and obviously we'll just ever so grateful Ooh, for it as and well. And a little bit of extra info for you guys, we've also hit 50,000 views overall on the channel and I do believe, yes we did, we surpassed 100 videos quite a while back actually yeah um, that's quite a while ago but unfortunately the two view counts that YouTube show for us we've got a channel view count that we can see on our video manager but we've also got the view count that you guys can see on the it's not view count the video count they do differ um, probably because of private videos that we've got stored yeah, and whatnot. Anyway. so um, but we have passed 100 videos so 100 videos 300 subscribers um, 50,000 views overall thank you so much guys really it's going good it. we're doing well Thank you. So until the next video from us, take care, see you soon, have a good year, and bye for now. Bye bye guys. That is all we have for today folks. Join us again next week on another Saturday Geeks video to find out what adventure we embark on next. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like and comment on the video below. Remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with our latest videos. Till next time. Take care, stay safe, and remember, let, let your, your geek side out. out. Toodle Toodle